Welcome Chumbas and Chumbatas, I'm Hammy and in this series we're exploring the lore of the world of Cyberpunk the 2020 role playing game and potential Cyberpunk 2077 World 2. In this episode we're looking at the iconic character of the Netrunner. What is the Cyberpunk Net and how do Netrunners dance through it? What gear do they use? What does the Net look and feel like? We'll introduce you to some famous Netrunners and finally discuss what Netrunning might look like in Cyberpunk 2077. Night City Grid Access Approaching Law Data Fortress. Data Wall Destroyed. Copying Entry. Netrunner. Netrunners are the ultimate electronic wraiths, thieves, guardians and hackers in the world of cyberpunk. Careering and dancing around the world of the net, runners can be rebels with a cause, sometimes ones without one. Why do people run the net? Some do it for fame, others for what they see as law and the greater good, others for fortune or just to survive. For many netrunners, none of these things matter at all. Sure, they'll stumble over dangerous secrets here, corporate treachery and more there, but it's only another step to the next upgrade or dive. Only one thing matters to these spirits, keep on running. So how do Netrunners actually run the net? In the Cyberpunk 2020 world, Netrunners grab technology by the throat and hang on for their lives. Although you can plug into the net with old fashioned electrodes on your temples, it's pretty slow and you need interface plugs for the best speed. These tap into major nerve trunks to send and receive signals. In the net, speed and reactions can be the difference between a narrow escape and a fried brain. To interface, most people wear their plugs on wrists for ease of use, but occasionally a true cyber techie will mount them directly into their brain at the temples, in which case you're a plug head, or just behind the ears, called a Frankenstein. In the back of the head, it's called a puppet head. Some cover them with inlaid silver or gold caps, Others just head warmers. It's your style and it's got to be over substance tumor. The first rule of cyberpunk. Now anyone in the cyberpunk world can access net space, but only the true net runner can do custom alterations of the net, navigate channels on the fly, run the net raw by typing commands, or use importantly attack, defense and security programs for their own preservation or gains. A net runner needs a deck. About the size of a paperback book, it has six ports in, six out for Jackie and other people in Cyberpunk 2020, and is very often portable. They can fit in limbs, they can be cellular adapted to tap into phone networks, cybernetic net running bodies, and even Fabergé and marble encrusted decks. Although those aren't the greatest performers. They're certainly style over substance though. Decks can be upgraded for memory, speed, and data walls for protecting the runner, and of course contain the modem required to connect to the net the interface system required to make sense of its signals, and most importantly, the programs that a runner has armed and protected themselves with when they're jacking in. Last but not least, you need a connection, and that's not as simple as it sounds. Netrunners, from the nature of their work, are often in hiding or on the run. Chances are, if you do anything worthwhile, someone might be trying to trace you, and paying for your connection wouldn't be very cyberpunk. In the world of 2020, you could jack in at a data term on a street, albeit very dangerous, and breaking into corporate offices wasn't unheard of, although probably even more dangerous. In 2077, it looks as though maybe that the cell phone has replaced everything here. In the net, netrunners are represented by icons, avatar images chosen by the runner of themselves. Your icon can look like anything you want it to, from an armoured techno warrior, a fantasy creature billowing smoke and flame, to a bizarre shape or logo, or even a really realistic depiction of yourself. You can change your icon any time you enter the net, and disguise it even by using special programs for stealth and evasion. Choosing your icon is one of the things you'll need to do when you jack in. Make sure it's got your personal style written all over it. When your programs are stocked in your cyber deck, they'll be represented in the net by icons too. An intrusion program could be a massive pile driver visually or a glowing red hammer. A detection program could come at you as a large black metal dog with glowing eyes or an anti-personnel program as a hellhound. A big wolf with fire running over its body. Those are designed to cause a heart attack in humans by the way. Many of these are intrusion countermeasure electronics or ICE. And black ice is known to netrunners as being the worst kinds, the most dangerous, illegal, and the kind of stuff you can slip up on, often fatally. Any netrunner attacking a data fortress will run into some ice. They can be small and network based, they can mess with the navigation systems of the runner's cyber deck, they can also physically harm the deck, and therefore the runner too, by short circuiting the deck and frying the equipment and its user as well, if they're not lucky. So Tumba, if I've not put you off yet, then the world of the net is actually a pretty cool place. Make sure your wrist plugs are tight, slam the go switch, and your world is grey-white static for a few seconds as you drop into online. 
After a heartbeat, a sickening falling sensation, you then swoop forward, hurtle in, with a maze of shifting neon shapes and spinning green lines of grids cascading out before you. Welcome to the Cyberpunk Net. So what is the net in Cyberpunk? It's the plane of information to a net runner, their real world, the physical world, the meat world, only exists to allow access. Every telecommunication device and electronic processor in every gadget and piece of kit creates a kingdom, an ocean to a runner that spans from your toaster through your whole city to the globe, near Earth orbit, and even beyond if some people are to be believed. Imagine a myriad of connections of every sort, satellites, fiber optics, radio, telephone lines, any place a computer can be turned on and a chip can be powered up is an extension of the net in this universe. It's potentially infinite. If you can link a computer to the net, you automatically create a new section around that computer. Some people, like the most brilliant and paranoid netrunner ever, Raish Bartmos, even believe that aliens may have entered the net from space. Although I'd take that with a pinch of salt if I was you. The cyberpunk net looks nothing like our internet of today. Imagine being able to navigate a 3D wireframe and worlds of grids and shapes. Areas of high resistance appear as mountains while areas of low resistance or fast speed travel like high speed connections appear as planes. The net was made possible by the Ahara Grub transformation algorithms. These are programs that govern the net reality to encode it to look this way. Computer networks, links and data fortresses appear as icons too in this net. Actual telecommunication lines appear as an endless blue and white grid stretching as far as the eye can see. When an individual line must be located, your cyberdeck locates the required access point and identifies it with a bright red beacon of light. Now, different areas of the global net actually look visually different from the stunning to the oppressive in architecture, depending on where in the world you are and the technology surrounding the net of that area. Take Pacifica, for example, the region from pole to pole, from Alaska to the Antarctic, Singapore to the Galapagos, covering West Coast America too. You'll see it as a virtual seascape of blue-green crystal water. Two moons in the sky, representing the sun and moon in real space, in the West Central USA kingdom of the net. Olympia, the sun shines off modern skyscrapers hanging high in the blue sky. As you traverse these different looking worlds and lands, real life positioning is relative in the net too. A computer system buried underground, for example, will be positioned kind of similarly if you look in the net. And a moving system, say a system on a truck, or maybe even a train, will travel through the subgrids that are parallel to its travel in real space. As you navigate a bamboo forest or a shining sea, you're going to be looking for data fortresses in the net as a runner. These are computer systems. They are a 3D representation of that computer within the net. As with an icon, the more realistic portrayals require more tech and more memory and processing power. Companies and corporations often use their corporate logos. I love the fact that in the middle of Japan, with all the Zaibatsu and corporations fighting each other, there is one outlier, a data fortress shaped like a certain mouse head. I'm sure you know what animation company that that represents. Data fortresses are fortresses for a reason. Programs, sysops, defensive netrunners, or sometimes even artificial intelligences all lie in wait, depending on the severity of the target you attack, to stop unwanted intrusions. In the Cyberpunk 2020 RPG, netrunning is an entire mini-game in and of itself, and it'll be interesting to see how the new version of that Cyberpunk Red from our Talsorian games maybe redoes netrunning when it's released sometime in the next year or so, we hope. A netrunner in the game would have to attack data walls or breach code gates surrounding the data fortress before getting inside and being able to access the programs within and memory for information they'd be looking for. As well as netrunners hiding away, other virtual realities and other BBSs in the net exist for all kinds of things from recreation through to business and in a world that can allow nearly anything however you define right or wrong there are going to be people fighting to protect their own interests. The world of cyberpunk in the RPG and in 2077 is a dangerous place. The traditional concepts of good and evil are replaced by expedience. Do what you need to to survive and if you can do some good along the way great but don't count on it. With the world and beyond on tap to a netrunner, the net isn't a free and easy place. For every beautiful Pacific sea, there's a dolphin program, potentially capering around, but also potentially watching your every move. Dangerous counter-intrusion programs, dungeon-like data fortresses with horrific guards of programs of corporations and governments certainly don't want their secrets discovered. Now the megacorps in the world of cyberpunk and Netwatch make it a dangerous place. Different areas of the net in different kingdoms have different dominating factions. Some are wild or neutral zones. 
Some are often corp or netwatch dominated. Many netrunners hate netwatch. They initially were created as kind of the police of the net. They were under a loose UN charter, but they were heavily corporate sponsored. Set up to combat rogue hackers and computer crime, their mandates expanded very, very quickly worldwide. And they're now a separate contribution run business with governments and corps paying contributions for effectively protection. Netwatch have powerful arrest programs and often are donated gear from corporations and local governments. They can freeze your cyber deck in a loop, making you unable to jack out until local police or corps come and pick you up and do the dirty work of taking you away. That might be delaying your fate rather than improving it. The law of the cyberpunk world, in 2020 in particular, was very, very harsh on computer-related and net crime. You could have a heavy prison term. A hit squad could be sent from a corp to your house. You might have an order to wipe your brain. You could even be, if you're very unlucky, fried directly through the net. Outside of the battle between Netwatch, the corporations, and our more rebel netrunners, there are many people in the net going about their day-to-day -day business. Corporate programmers, watchdogs, people that Raish Bartmos describes just as vandals, who like destroying things and don't care about collateral damage. There are also thieves, people who just want to take information, be it for monetary gain or for any idealistic reasons. AIs of many kinds also inhabit the net, from basic types to humans whose brain patterns were extracted into the net before their deaths, such as famous netrunner and ex-flame of Johnny Silverhand, Alt Cunningham, who you may have already seen as the inspiration for the pose of the cyber psycho in the reveal trailer for Cyberpunk 2077 many, many years ago now. There are rogue AIs that have broken free of human control and live within the net as free, if hunted spirits. Netwatch have a division to hunt these down. Some even speak of transcendentally sentient AIs that run the different kingdoms or zones of net space that we've talked about. It's debated whether these even exist, but the brilliant batshoot crazy Bartmos claim to have spoken to and even received gifts of code from some of them. But he thinks that aliens are in the net in space, so as I've said, the jury's still out on that one. I've spoken a lot of Raish Bartmos, he's one of many famous netrunners in the cyberpunk world, and a bit of an enigma in that he goes by his real name. Netrunners often go under a nom de lectrique, keeping their meathead or human real name left behind out in real space to make sure that they're under anonymity. Bartmos ran rampant around the world of cyberpunk for many years before finally flatlining Although he had top-of-the-line life support to sustain him, he was so paranoid he didn't tell anyone where he was, and no one could find him. So he spent his remaining years deteriorating in a cryogenic freezer, whilst still, even with very, very slow response times due to his semi-death-like state, being able to be one of the best hackers in the cyberpunk net. In terms of other famous net runners in the world, well, Spider Murphy, a kind of friend and also a kind of rival of Bart Moss's, actually edited his guide to the net while he was in this state. In many ways, a lot more pragmatic and grounded than Bart Moss ever was, she picked up his torch for the freedom of information. I've also mentioned Alt Cunningham, partner of Johnny Silverhand. She was immortalized along with many other characters in the Cyberpunk 2020 adventure, Never Fade Away. She devised a program called Soul Killer that can effectively copy a netrunner's mind into the net. In the Cyberpunk 2020 world, she is the ghost in the machine still, surfing the net as a consciousness, as an AI, as a program, who knows? Copying complete. Log off command initiated. Returning to real space. So finally, what will netrunners look like in the world of Cyberpunk 2077? Well, remember, of course, 2077 isn't a precise timeline follow-on from the stories of Cyberpunk 2020, the world that we've been exploring. There will be some continuity though. We've already seen that frying people through the web is alive and well through a couple of incidents on the plane and also a corporate exec in the E3 reveal trailer. We're also introduced to a character called T-Bug in the 48 minute gameplay reveal that we saw from Gamescom 2018. T-Bug helps locate Sandra Dorset, the target of V and Jackie, in the mission that we see breaking through. In the mission Going Pro, we also see the Corp Meredith Stout of Militech use with one of her goons a lie detector type program on V when she goes to the rendezvous. Now, CD Projekt Red have said that they want a fluid class system and there are effectively three different skill trees that you can put your points into by the sounds of things. Solo, Techie and Netrunner. Whether you can change these on the fly and how you can is yet to be determined or talked about, but it seems that you can put points into these three different trees in various ways. So you can be a character that you can flex as you want to. So everyone can have a bit of net running if they like. In terms of what net running actually looks like, 
the game, we've seen a few examples as well in the 48 minute gameplay demo. When we connected to the Maelstrom gang members neural socket, this was also done to us by Meredith Stout's Militech goon. You can jack into a network and apparently you're connected to everything it connects to. We, for example, went into the personnel system of the Maelstrom hideout and activated quick hacks, although there were other options on the screen such as reducing aiming and disabling cyberware as a hack straight up. Then when we hovered over the particular gang member in question, we could then do a quick hack in terms of disabling their weapon. But these cyberpunk type systems that we see mean that you can kind of enable quick hacks in combat, but also do maybe bigger system level hacks that we've seen there as well. It's gonna be really awesome to see how net running, being a techie or being a solo develop in the world of 2077, and I can't wait to find out. Thanks very much for delving into the cyberpunk lore of the net runner with us in both Cyberpunk 2020 and what it might be in the upcoming game, 2077. Throw a like if you enjoyed this, subscribe if you'd like to see more, and comment with what part of the world of cyberpunk be it 2020, 2077, dystopian future or otherwise you'd like us to cover in our next video. From the dark future to you, cheers tumors and tumbatas, keep it cool and most importantly keep on running.